Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the iOS 10 beta. And I'm going to take a look at a, a few apps that have seen some changes here with the update. Uh, one of the more obvious applications that shows up is the Home application, where Apple has, uh, has finally put HomeKit front and center and has given it an application for us to work with, as opposed to a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that were, was there before in Apple's HomeKit. So let's go ahead and tap on that and take a look at what's in there. So if I tap on the Home button, I'm taken to this uh, interface that tells me Welcome to Home. Uh, it lets you know that you can control your home in terms of uh, monitoring your home. Uh, you can use the Home app. You can use Control Center, Siri, Apple Watch to control your home, uh, which is nice. You can set it and forget it. So you can automate different behaviors and setups within the application, and you can share your access with family and friends. Uh, that you trust to access your home. So let's go ahead and tap Get Started. And so it's going to take me into the application now. And so there we go. And so it automatically asks, you want to allow home to access your location while you're using the app? I'm going to go ahead and allow it so it knows where I'm at. And so this is the home interface. Now you start building your connected home by adding your lights, clocks, thermostats, and other HomeKit-enabled accessories. So you just tap on Add Accessory in this space and it says select an accessory uh, to add to home and you want to make sure that your accessory is powered on and nearby and you can see it's doing a a little bit of a search right now uh, to see what kind of accessories uh, that we've got here now again for myself I don't uh, believe I have any HomeKit enabled accessories uh, I have a Nest thermostat which I know uh, Google hasn't put in there to be managed by Apple's HomeKit and I know uh, as well, I don't believe the Apple TV will come on here, but I do know it serves as a secure connect for other HomeKit enabled accessories. So let's go ahead and just tap on my accessory isn't shown here. And so then it says, of course, make sure that it's powered on, uh, connected, and all those kinds of things. I'm going to tap done. And so I don't really have anything here, so I'm just going to say cancel. Uh, but this is how this works. Now, if you look down at the, at the top, uh, actually, if you look at the top right, you've got an edit button where you can edit. Uh, different things in your home and you can see I can go right into the uh, actual home settings I can change the top there to say something different besides my home if I wanted to change that uh, I can come in here and tap invite and I can invite people I just uh, tap in the person that I want to invite there and I can invite them uh, I can also uh, change the home wallpaper by taking a photo or choose from existing uh, I can put some notes on home sharing and I can remove this particular home as well so I can add multiple homes so I'm just going to go back, actually let's cancel this, say done, and I'm back in the main screen. Down below uh, on the bottom right you can see we've got automation and so your accessories can automatically perform actions based on different criteria. If you have the Apple TV fourth generation as the center of your home you can control HomeKit enabled uh, accessories remotely. So what Apple TV allows you to do if you have one of those, not only can you watch Apple TV but it'll allow you to uh, control your HomeKit enabled devices when you're not at home. So it creates that hub that allows uh, for a secure connection remotely. And so you can use that with an iPad or your iPhone or different applications that allow for that automation to happen. Go ahead and tap back at home. So that gives you an idea of how HomeKit uh, works. Again, I don't have any uh, accessories to show, um, but just let you know what this app looks like. So let's go ahead and go back home here for a minute. So that's the home uh, accessory. Another thing that I want to show you, uh, kind of related to your home, is changes actually in the clock application, something you wouldn't think of. So I'm going to tap on clock here. And so one of the things that clock has added, again, you've got your world, you've got your world clock, and you've got uh, your alarms like normal. And if we tap on here, we've got our, our timer and stopwatch and all of that in here but we've got this bedroom uh, bedtime option that's built into our clocks now and so what this does is this sets up a wake and sleep time and tracks a little bit of your health in terms of your sleep cycles and those sorts of things and so let's go ahead and tap on get started so it's gonna say what time would you like to wake up and so you set your wake time so let's just say I want to get up at 6 a.m. I'm gonna tap next and then it says, which days of the week should the alarm go off? And so I've, I tap the days that it goes off. I'm going to not say Saturday, Sunday. We'll just say uh, Monday through Friday. So then I'll tap next. And then it says, how many hours of sleep do you need each night? 
And so you kind of put down the number of hours of sleep. It says most adults need between seven and eight. I'm just going to say six, let's say, and put it lower and see what it says. Tap next. And then would you like a bedtime reminder? And so what's nice about this is it reminds you what time to go to bed. And you can select whether you want it to have a reminder 15 minutes before, 30 minutes before. You can set kind of your time there on when you want to be reminded. I'm going to leave it at 15. That sounds good. Let's tap next. And then what do you want to hear when you wake up? And so they have these various uh, sounds here that you can use in terms of uh, different audio. And so, you know, you tap on it and pick whichever one you want. And so I'll just do early riser. I'll leave it where it is at the default and just say next. Now it says stay consistent and sleep better. And so it says you can keep your uh, sleep history bars aligned by going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. And so it's going to give you a sleep history here that shows you uh, how you're doing in term, terms of your sleeping. It's going to remind you when to go to bed and all of that. And this actual sleep data will get added into your health kit. And so when you go into health kit and you take a look at all your health data, it's actually going to have that information in there. And it kind of calculates the uh, hours in the bed. It anal analyzes your motion and the device usage and all of that. So this would work really uh, effectively potentially with something like an iPhone uh, where you would uh, set this up and then keep the iPhone under your pillow or by your bed somewhere. I guess maybe under the pillow isn't good if it's running because it might get hot. But if you keep it somewhere on the bed, it will actually track some of your movement and, and those sorts of things. So if I just tap Save, now what it's done is it saved that bedtime uh, calculator. And so you can see it it's telling me uh, when, when I should go to bed and when I should wake. So I need to go to bed at midnight if I'm going to wake up at 6 if I want 6 hours of sleep. And so I can, I can adjust this just by sliding it. You know, I can say, well, I actually want to go to bed at 11, let's say. So that would give me 7 hours of sleep. And so that's the alarm. I can turn it off just by tapping this, turning it on and off. And so, again, it's just a nice little addition that they've put in there, something that you might normally not see uh, that was built in here. Uh, if I tap Options at the top, I can go back in and change any of the uh, information that I want, including the volume and all of that sort of thing. I'll say Cancel and come back in here. So, again, that's the uh, sleep timer uh, that's built in for bedtime into your clock application. Let's go back to the home screen here and tap off. Okay, and one more application I thought we'd take a look at today is the news application. It did see some changes, so if we just tap on news here, be taken into the news application. And as you can see, it says, welcome to news, uh, the best stories, sources you love, etc. Uh, it talks about news and privacy, uh, if you want to tap on that, just to get an idea for the privacy policies that are there. So if we uh, just tap on that. It kind of gives us all about uh, privacy, what the data they're collecting, that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to say done. Let's just go ahead and tap on next. And so it shows what's new. Uh, there's a new for you uh, area on there. There's some notifications uh, that will uh, alert you to new stories for certain channels that you like. And there's uh, subscriptions from top publishers. So they've added all of that in there. So let's go ahead and tap on next. Now, notifications, you can find out about important stories from your favorite channels, and so you can customize your notifications. So if I just click on that, uh, I can get notifications from uh, news top stories, editor's picks. Uh, I've got uh, more channels like CNN, The Post, Bloomberg, uh, Hollywood, Reporter, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just going to leave them where they're at and say done. Now you can get my news in the inbox. And so what they'll do is they'll send the stories uh, by their editors to your inbox so you can read them on your email. And so if you tap on Sign Me Up, it's going to prepare your news so that it's ready to send off to you and it wants to access uh, my location. I'm going to go ahead and allow it to do that. And so this is the new uh, news application. You can see it's laid out a little bit more cleanly. Uh, it's got information on uh, the weather for me there. Uh, it talks about um, all the different top stories. And so you can scroll up and down. You've got trending stories down below. Uh, then you've got trending in the news. And so you can see it's a, it's a little bit uh, more streamlined layout. Uh, looks a lot better as well. So you can actually kind of go through and see it just loads as, as time goes on here. It just keeps loading these various stories uh, in here. Let's go ahead and scroll all the way up to the top. 
So that's the news. If I just uh, tap to the right, that little right arrow, it's going to take me into the news top stories. And this is where I can drill in and get more information uh, for that particular area and see all of the stories. Uh, if I just tap back, I come back to the main screen. And so, uh, again, kind of nicely laid out. If I tap on favorites, these are different favorite stories I might have uh, for different uh, things there. I can tap on explore and it's going to give me different things to explore. You can see I've got editor's picks and these are all uh, magazines that I can pick and all these things are integrated now so I can just uh, go in here and choose the ones that I want to read. Uh, and then I've got recommendations based on things that I've liked before and so these are different magazines and then you've got your different categories that you can browse down here. Of course you can do a search. You can search for certain things uh, that are on here and so again let's go with uh, Oh, I don't know. Let's go with MTV Music Awards. And so it's going to bring up all the articles with that particular topic for your search. You just tap to go back to do it again. And then you can have your saved areas and your history. So maybe this is like a saved article, let's say, that I put down. And then you've got history of things that you've read uh, before. And you can clear that history anytime you want. So again, that's the, uh, that's the news app. It just gives you a little bit more information, and it's laid out in a different format. Let's just go back to the home area here. So that gives you an idea of a few of the new applications in iOS 10. Like I said, I'm going to go through and show you some of the other ones, like some of the changes to photos and, and some of the um, other settings and things that you can use with the new iOS 10 beta. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.